Hey Jackals, I'm Simon and today I'll show you how to make this audio visualizer in DaVinci Resolve, but if you want to know how to make this one or this one, you can also watch the videos and I'll leave a link to those down below. Now let's get digital. Now to make this effect, you need some music. In this case, I'll just use the music I made. If I zoom in on it, you can see that it's an MP3 and we actually need a WAV file to make this. So if you don't have a WAV file of your music, you can also do this in DaVinci Resolve. Simply mark this as an in and an out point using I and O. Then you'll want to go to the delivery page, uncheck export video, go to audio, change the format from QuickTime to WAV, and make sure that you have the track selected. In this case, I only have one, so bus one is okay. If I have multiple tracks, I would select just the one that I want. Then export it and you'll have a WAV file. So I have done the conversion and simply now put it in. And as you can see, it's exactly the same. And now to make this effect, we'll make it in the Fusion page. So open the media pool, right click, make a new Fusion composition, give it a name. You don't have to change the duration. So let's say it's this one. You don't have to change the duration because you can simply extend it. Then select the Fusion clip and go into the Fusion page. And now to make this effect, we we'll need to install two plugins. Well, actually one. It's a library that contains all of the community plugins. I'll leave a link to this down below and simply follow the instruction on how to install it. Then once you do have it installed, go to Workspace, Scripts, Reactor and open it. Then once it's opened, you'll want to type in audio at the top. And as you can see, you have a bunch of plugins to select from. And the ones that we'll need is the audio waveform. This will give us the actual waveform of the audio. And for the image, we'll use the SAC less audio modifier. So install these two plugins. And once you install them, you may need to restore DaVinci Resolve. And now we can start making the effect. I'll use control space. Some of you may have shift space to open the select tools. Type in audio, we'll have the audio waveform, select this one and add it. I'll simply connect it to the media out. And as you can see, it says, please load audio file. I'll go to the WAV file, browse and let me see, it's this one. And it's the WAV file that I've made. So you now have a bunch of options, but the one that I want to use is for this proxy sampling to be one. Then I'll set the zoom and resolution also to one. Now currently we don't see anything and that's because the music is not playing. So at this point we'll see some changes and I don't want to have this kind of style. So I'll go to spectrum, enable it, use 256. I'll change this to bars and I'll also enable the equidistant cuts. Now everything's a little bit too small. So I can simply adjust the scale to what I want. I'll go with seven. And if you want to, you can also adjust the steps, but I'll leave this up to you. Now, one thing that I'll also enable is the cross here, but at the moment it looks like this. Next, I'll add a background node to this and connect it so that we get a merge node automatically, just like that. I'll set the alpha to zero so that it's transparent and I'll also go to image and change the resolution to be the same. And I'll use 1920 by 1920, something like this. And then so that we get a circle shape, we'll use again control space or shift space for the select tools, type in coordinate space and change the shape to polar to rectangular, just like this. And now, as you can see, this is the result of the crosshair. But at this point, I want to get rid of this line. And I also want to make some distance or cuts in this circle. And to do that, we'll use a mask. So let me add rectangle node. I'll display it on the left side. And because I just want to have some thin lines, I'll change the width to 0 0.04. I'll change the height so it covers the whole screen and then I'll position the center X value to the left side. Now we don't see any changes to this part because we have to connect the rectangle to the mask in the merge node. 
and currently only this is shown up, as you can see. Now I don't want to make a bunch of copies of this rectangle to achieve the result that I want, so for that I'll be using a duplicate node. So with the rectangle selected, control space or shift space, duplicate. Now we see everything because it's connected to the mask, so we have to connect it here. And in this case I'll make 36 copies. We don't see any changes because all of the copies are stacked on top of each other. So I'll simply adjust the X position. And once I do, as you can see, we start seeing the spacing. Now what the X value will be will depend on how many copies you actually have. And in this case, I think 0.53 gives me the result that I want. Now this is what we currently have, but I want to get rid of this line and to do that, We'll go to the merge node, go to the settings and apply the mask as inverted. Now we get this result, so we may need to go back to the duplicate node and make some adjustments so that you get the spacing that you want and you also don't have the line that we just removed. So maybe something like this looks okay. You may need to also go back in the audio waveform and adjust the steps. Now this may look okay, but this actually means that a whole section moves together and I don't want that and that is why I've used steps zero so that we get individual sections of the audio waveform. Now in case you want to display duplicate node, just a bit of a warning, this will hurt your eyes because it looks like this. So if you want to display the duplicate node, how it looks like, I suggest you use a background node, simply connect it like this and now you can display it. So now for the next step, what we want to do is change the color of this because it's kind of boring. You could do it here in the layout, but this would just make it so it's solid color. And if you want to make it a gradient, you'll use a background node, connect it to here so it's a merge node. Now the background will actually be on the top. So for that, what you have to do is connect the coordinate space also to the mask. So now the background is black, but it's not full color. So go to the image and change the resolution to also be 1920. So now everything is black. So simply go to the color. I'll go to gradient and I'll select radial one. Adjust the points to how you want and change the color to what you want. So this is what we currently have. The effect is almost done. You can add any kind of other effects to spice it up. So maybe a glow node. I will use a soft glow. I can't give you any specific values. So just use the ones that look best to you. Now one of the last things that we want to do is to change this from 1920 by 1920 to be 1080p because if you go to the timeline it look like this. Now it looks okay but to me it's a bit confusing because I don't actually know how it will look like when I get to the timeline. So to fix that I'll use another background node. I'll connect it here. I'll switch the inputs and I can also scale this down by adjusting the size. Another way how you can affect the size is to go to this merge node and adjust the Y value. So you can get a different kind of look. So maybe I'll just put this one back to one as it was and first adjust this one. Now if you don't like the look, as you can see currently all of the waveform is here and none here. We'll simply go to the audio waveform node and change the proxy sampling and change it to something that you like. And now what we need to fix is to mask anything that goes outside of this circle. So in this case, this waveform goes outside. To do this simply, we'll use an ellipse, connect it here and adjust the size. So if you click on one of the edges diagonally, both the width and the height will be adjusted at the same time. You can also click away once the ellipse is selected so that you can actually see how it looks like. And I suggest you 
put equals in the width or at the height. This makes an expression and track the plus to either the height or the width so that you can adjust both at the same time and they have the same value. And you can also adjust the soft edge by a tiny bit so that it will look nicer. Now the effect is done if you want to stop at this point, but what I'll add is an image that will be spinning and changing the size based on the bit. As for the image, I'll just use my logo, but you can use any image that you want. And this part of the effect will go here. So I'll make a merge node, put it here. And the first thing that we want to do is change the size, but I won't be changing it in this merge node. I'll use another one because I'll also combine this. So I need to switch the inputs on this merge node so the image is in the front. So control T to do that. I can now change the size. Maybe something like that. I'll have to see how it looks like. And to do that, I have to use an ellipse. And again, I'll use an expression so I can change the size equally and connect it to here. Now the ellipse is a little bit too big, so I'll simply change it. But now I don't see any changes and currently this mask has to be connected to this merge so that we can see the changes. So now I'll simply scale it down. Now because my image is transparent and doesn't fill the whole circle, I could actually use another background node so I don't have this color and I would connect it here and change the alpha to zero so that it is actually transparent. Now after this merge node you can use any kind of effect. I'll simply copy this off glow node but you can use anything that you want. So maybe something like this so it pops out just a little bit. Now I'll use another merge node. I'll put it here and I'll use a background node and also make this transparent just like this and this will actually be the background so control T to switch the inputs and now instead of connecting the mask here I'll connect it here so the result looks the same it just depends what you want and how many nodes you want to use but why I actually did that is because we'll use something in this node now to scale this image up and down I'll actually use this node and change the size like this as you can see and to do that automatically, we'll use the second audio plugin that we installed, which was the Wisaw Class Audio Plugin Modifier. I'll connect that plugin to a custom tool node. So control space, custom tool. Now it has a lot of number ins and points. In this case, I just want number in one. You can also disable all of the other controls if you don't need them. So I'll do just that. So now I have just number in one. I'll right click on it. Go to modify width and you should see audio wave. Click on it and the modifier tab shows up. Then go to it and you'll also now need a wave file. So the one that I've exported previously and shown you how to do using the winch resolve. Now leave everything to default. I'll simply change the amplitude to two, but this will depend on the audio file that you use. So then go back and check what the number in value actually is. So in this case it goes from 0 0.3 and it looks like it's 0 0.7 it's kind of the threshold that I want. So that's where this number will come in. Now because I use 2 as the amplitude scale, all of the values here are basically multiplied by 2. So it's a little bit easier to work with, but if you have big enough numbers you don't need to multiply the scale. And now what we want to do is to make an expression using this value in the merge node so that the size will adjust automatically. But before I do that, I'll simply go to start. So we're at frame zero. I'll keyframe the angle so that we can also make this spin. And I'll go to frame 240. So this is 10 seconds in my project. As you can see, we have timeline frame rate 24 frames per second. So 240 frames is 10 seconds. And then what I'll want to do is simply, let's see, which we do want this to spin. So I'll put this to minus 360. So it moves in the direction that I want it to move. Then what I'll do is with this node selected because I've animated it, go to the spline, select it. If you have this option enabled, show only selected tools, then only the selected tool will be shown. 
So in this case, the Murach 4. Then you can use zoom to fit, select both points that represent the keyframes, so 0 and 240 and the values, and then I'll use set relative. So now the animation will continue indefinitely. So now the image will be spinning one revolution per 10 seconds. We can all close this. And the second thing that you want to do is to use an expression to change the size. So you can put in equals or you can use right click and set expression. Now the expression that I'll be using is this one. So what this expression does is the following. If the custom tool one, which is the name of this node, dot number in one, which is the name of this property. So if this value is less than 0 0.7, you can change this value. It doesn't have to be the same as mine. Then if this is true, the size will be 0 0.9. If it's not true, the size will be 1. And you can also change these two sizes to what you want. So this is basically done. I'll simply purge the cache and go into the timeline and wait for this to enter out and see what we got. And as I see, I have to go back and make some changes so that this line doesn't show up. So let's see what I ended up with. Control F for full screen and space. Now I think it looks okay. If you want to use any background, you can. Now if you can see the background, this one, it means we've done something wrong. Let's take a look. All of the backgrounds should be, yeah. So this one doesn't have the alpha turned down. So that was the issue. And now you should see any background that you have. And the last piece of information that I can give you, if you have any issues with rendering, like it looks awesome when you play it here, but it looks messed up when you export it like this, as you can see, we don't have any waveforms on the left side, but we do here. This is actually what you see in the timeline. If that happens, Go to the deliver page, go all the way down. You'll want to turn in the advanced settings and make sure that you use use render cached images. If you don't, then you may get the issue when you export this file. And that's it for this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more DaVinci Resolve and video editing content and hit the bell notification icon so you know when my next video comes out. I'm Simon and until next time Jackals, keep it digital.